Sure, so uh, my name's uh, Jamie Collier and I work at Digital Shadows as a strategic cyber threat intelligence analyst. Well, so I started off with my undergraduate looking at international relations and then did a PhD kind of looking at the geopolitical aspects of cybersecurity. So always interested in security and technology and how they intersect. And I think for me, threat intelligence was the kind of the natural extension of that, you know, looking at how the threat landscape and, uh, you know, evolves, um, how geopolitics influences it. Uh, it kind of seemed like a nice kind of link between what I'd done in the past and, you know, a future kind of sustainable career that could kind of keep me, uh, yeah, keep me busy. So a lot of my day is kind of keeping up with the cyber threat landscape. So, you know, the sort of attacks we're seeing, uh, the sort of tactics that threat actors are using. Uh, so a lot of my day will be kind of scanning the threat landscape, keeping up with the news, what's being publicly reported. Um, so, you know, a lot of my day, A, reading that, but then I think more importantly, translating what it means for our clients. Should they be worried? Should they not? You know, we see a lot of uh, headline news that, you know, causes a lot of distraction. Uh, conversely, we see other stories, other pieces in the news that maybe don't get the same kind of headline press on the BBC or Sky, uh, but do actually represent a really serious threat to our clients. So a lot of my day is kind of trying to assess uh, what's important, what's not, and why. There's a lot of people putting out a lot of really good stuff uh, on social media, on cybersecurity. And I think another thing is podcasts. You know, you can read as much as we like, but actually, if you can listen to people having a conversation, uh, and you, know, you can get access to those kind of real experts in the field, uh, one way to really kind of start learning. Well, of course, I'd recommend uh, Digital Shadows, uh, Shadow Talk. Um, but I think apart from that, uh, Risky Business is another really good one. Uh, you know, they kind of will look at the, all the, the news in the week, rather than just kind of letting you know what happened, they'll kind of you know, add their own analysis, their own kind of evaluation as well. I think one thing would be, A, you know, you've got to, you've got to really learn, you've got to kind of put some time in uh, yourself and take some of your own initiative uh, to put some of that learning in. But I think, I think B is if you're coming into kind of interview stage is actually thinking, how can I showcase that? So for example, if you were interested in cyber threat intelligence, you know, maybe you could pick one threat actor you could read a, you know, a bunch of different reports on that threat actor and then maybe write a little you know, short report or something summing up what that threat actor gets up to. I think that's something, if you can kind of showcase that passion, that can go a you know, really long way in interviews. Sure, so my uh, presentation was you know, pretending the year was 2030 and that the cyber threat intelligence industry is kind of completely collapsed. So you know, the market's kind of completely crashed. And what I tried to do is, is two things. First of all, to try and understand why the market had crashed. Um, and then I think, to, you know, potentially more critically, you know, what we can do to mitigate that. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a prediction. It was kind of creating this kind of, this imagined future. Um, so it was more about trying to anticipate what are those potential banana skins in the industry and, you know, what we can do to mitigate those. I think a key uh, takeaway for me is for the industry to really focus on providing practical advice. You know, we can often provide threat intelligence or we can develop threat intelligence for the sake of it. And it's, you know, very good at showing how clever we all are, but actually how is it serving our clients? What's its practical effect? How is it actionable? So I think, I think that's one thing I'd really encourage the industry as a whole is to really focus on that practical advice.